So are we being invaded by an alien race and are they coming to save us and or harvest us for meat and, and organs? I don't know, but I don't think so. And today I'm going to just pitch to you a couple of different things as to why I think this is completely natural. And the biggest thing is, is that I really don't think we have enough data here. We have seen arguably four interstellar objects come into our solar system from other places that we've been able to somewhat study. And each time they come in, we get more and more data about them. Now, the big thing in the, the really short and easy of it is there's a couple people, especially a Harvard science by the name of a professor by the name of Harvey Loeb who thinks that this may be an alien ship that's cloaking itself as a space rock or comet and it's going to you know pass through our solar system I don't think he said it's going to land but he believes that there are characteristics that may indicate that this is a controlled drone a controlled ship maybe people are aboard it who knows now, there's a lot of disinformation out about this thing and a lot of things that numbers. I mean, we've heard that this thing is 100 kilometer wide, 77 kilometer wide, all the way down to seven kilometers in terms of its nucleus. Now, we've heard that it has a coma, and that is basically the dust that surrounds any type of comet that is basically 300,000 kilometers wide. Now, there is no argument that it has a, an unusually big dust cloud, if you will. But really, they're thinking that the internals or the nucleus are really only about seven kilometers now. Um, now, there's a lot of people out there sensationalizing this, saying they're seeing lights and everything else. But after we got more information and turned some spectrometers towards this to analyze what type of materials this is made up of, it starts to make sense that we might see some reflections from the sun. And the reason for that is because this comet is a majority made up of nickel. Now that is very unusual for a couple reasons, because most of the comets, at least in our solar system, they're going to be made of carbon, a little bit of cyanide, and um, ammonia, all things that are readily found here in our atmosphere. Now this is made of carbon, some, uh, s some carbon, mostly nickel, um, and it, it seems to be lacking iron. And, and really the iron part is, is quite unique because typically we don't see that. Typically you're gonna see iron and nickel combined together. Above and beyond that, what further is this is the dust cloud also is about eight to one carbon dioxide to water. Now typically our comments from our solar system are about five to one water to carbon dioxide and also have a bit of carbon monoxide. This seemingly has mostly, overwhelmingly, carbon dioxide, no carbon monoxide, and very little water. Now, when we talk about that dust cloud, it also has some cyanide, which is trace amounts. Now, when we talk about a comet, we talk about its dust cloud that travels with it. Now, typically on a Earth comet, if you will, or our solar system comet, you're going to start to see that make a tail. And that tail is basically just melting gases, and in most cases, water vapor for our comets that we know of that are within our solar system. Now, this is starting now to form a short tail. But again, that tail is carbon dioxide. So it's a very interesting thing. It's a short, stubby tail, but it's certainly starting to look more like a comet. But the thing about this dust cloud that RV Loeb brings up and a lot of other people is when it came in at our our on its trajectory to our solar system it basically had a huge coma or dust cloud and this was traveling in front of it for the longest time and as it went into our solar system it still traveled in front of it which was very unusual because typically what happens is you hit what we call solar winds now the solar winds are just radiation coming off of the sun and energy that would typically you know push that back and then you forms it into the glorious tails that we see on like you know, Haley Bob Comet or whatever we see here typically. But that didn't happen really quickly. It's starting to happen now, but it seems to be like it's been somewhat resistant to um, that, uh, that, that, that solar wind. So, you know, that again isn't something that I'm willing to say, oh, well, there's, there's, there's a silver bullet. Just because, you know, it has that, just because it's made of nickel and all oh, we saw lights. Well, yeah, it's made of nickel. It's a shiny metal, right? So obviously you're going to see some things reflect off of it. But I think a lot of these things are very easily explained. Only seen three of these different four, really. We've seen 2017. Probably the most famous was the Moa Moa, which is basically just a space rock floating through. Um, people made a big deal of that as well. 
we, there was no coma detected. So it was more like an asteroid than anything. Then we had two Iboris. Um, and again, th this was something that was, uh, uh, you know, they don't really know. I, I, it was probably maybe a comet. It seems as though it had many of the same properties being made of ammonia and carbon um, and mainly water. Uh, so it was very similar to what we see here on Earth, even though they said it came from outside of our solar system. We have IM-1, which is basically a meteor that crashed, I think like around Russia or Poland. Again, they saw it come in, but we've never recovered anything, so we don't know what that was made of. Uh, and now we have 3i Atlas, and 3i Atlas, as we know, as I mentioned, really odd, made of a lot of carbon dioxide, no carbon monoxide, very little water, and almost exclusively, you know, has nickel, um, nickel expression lines. It seems like it's made of nickel. And, and, and this has been the subject of, of great debate, will continue to be the subject of great debate, um, but these are the facts. But what it makes you realize is, yes, there's a lot right here, but outside, we don't know anything about, and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of things passing through. So, I, you know, again, I don't know why this is such a shock and why it can't just be chance, why it can't just be natural, and why this trajectory in particular, why it's weird, and I agree the solar wind should have impacted a little bit more, because it's new and it's made out of something that we have never seen it made before why the heck would you think that this is all of a sudden a spacecraft uh so let's take a look at uh, something jpl put together in terms of trajectory uh and i'll walk you through you know some things that does make it tantalizing to wonder about all right this is from jpl laboratories and you can see here this is tracking the trajectory of this uh comet coming in uh, a one or three three eye atlas you can see it's coming in this is our plane right here you can see kind of like a plate it's coming in above this plate then kind of coming in exactly equal around these planets and it will go below the plate and continue on wherever it may go next so if we zoom in here and i hit play you're gonna see where this comet goes so let's quickly go here it's coming in and right about here is when we you know we would expect those solar winds back out here to affect it but right now it's just it didn't even start to form a tail till much later uh, so that was one of the interesting things that they observed if we keep going forward let's go ahead and we'll get it closer right here is one of the things i want to zoom in on you can see this is where it comes in you can see it's it's pretty close to mars right here if we step forward it keeps going keeps going flying around you know arguably it gets pretty close to venus right there and then coming around here going getting i mean it's still very far away from mercury and then very far away from earth now again they're just saying it passes by in a in a really unique way so that basically what that means is, is that it's going to pass through and you know be pretty close to these uh, orbits. Now, I would argue if you wanted to get closer, let's go back here. If you wanted to get closer to Earth, right, there is a time where the, if you know this was truly sent and it was sent to see us, you would think they would have had it come in much later when Earth, you can see there rotating up there on the right hand side, it rotates around, it's already gone. But, you know, if we keep spinning this and spinning this, you would think that if they were truly trying to study Earth, per se, we would move this all the way around where this is up top here. You want to say north. Uh, that's not really north, probably. But anyway, so right here, you would want to have that pass by. And you can see by that time, it's it's almost out of our, our solar system. And it's going, you know, going to pass out here, you know, keep going. Well, actually, there's still a few few ways to go, but you can see now it's going to you know fly by some of these other other uh, um, outerly exoplanets. So um, I would argue that, that that this isn't. I would think if they were trying to observe us, in other words, that you would you would take advantage of that close pass and later on and have this right here where they could observe us much more closely. So if they are interested in our solar system, it seems like they're more interested in some of these other planets than us. Now, one of the things that is is really troubling folks is once it comes out here and passes through our asteroid belt, they, they don't know what's going to happen. And um, a lot of theorists say that there was another planet that got cross created this asteroid belt. And, you know, there's some uh, chances for some collisions uh, and hopefully that does not happen. But I do think that's more of a realistic concern than this thing, you know, sending, deploying things to to Earth or whatever. Uh, but if you're interested, I'll leave this map. It's really cool. You can see here it goes under. But this is what they're saying, which is a really just odd way to come in. 
that came in here it's going to get pulled around the sun kind of bent and then pushed out uh, but I, again why, why is that odd I, I don't know why that's odd it could happen uh, it is it is relatively low chance but how many things have slammed into earth have slammed into mars have slammed into i mean goodness look at our moon right i mean these these are things that we are observing in other places happening right now so you know stranger things have happened and just be grateful that it didn't hit us instead of trying to make this a fear-mongering thing you know i i just i really question a lot of these people so i know this is a bit out of ordinary for me but i i really do love space i think this is a phenomenal thing i think it's great that we're studying it um, you know, there is a, a fringe group that thinks that this could be biological in nature uh, because of the way it's consuming and so it seems like it's, its byproduct is nickel. Uh, so there's a lot of things in nickel manufacturing, but you, would, you, would, you, you tend, tend to need iron with that. Um, so it seems like it's pushing that out, maybe some titanium, which is very interesting. And, and I like to entertain the fact that, yeah, the, you know, the, they just cloak it as a comet it's really a ship or whatever you know it follows a muamua i really just think this is all blown out of proportion i don't think we've had the optics that we've had to be able to see these things a lot of these things are very very difficult to see this is going to fly behind the sun we're going to lose track we're not going to see it for, for a while then it will emerge um you know there, there are some things that we have to question here but the way it's acting again it's made up of something that we have never seen before on a comet so it may be impacted by our gravitational pull or the sun's gravitational pull or any of the other planets or our solar system or the solar winds. It may impact that much differently. We've never seen this before. So I don't think this is a ship. Although I think it would be a great idea to disguise it, I don't think it is. Is it some drone that was sent out? Well, maybe. I mean, aren't we doing the same thing? It's not that hard pressed to, to think about, but ultimately I think this is naturally occurring. And I think as time goes on, we're going to see more and more of these things as we have eyes and the ability with like spectrometers to actually see what these things are made of. They may not be playing by the same rules. They're nowhere near our solar system. They are traveling from so far away and they've been traveling some have it for billions of years before the earth was even formed. So, I mean, even that right there, uh, you know, maybe this thing has been en route before we were even a thought in the universe's, you know, grand design. So I, I think it's just reckless that these scientists or, you know, these theorists, I mean, he's, I think he's done this before. There's a lot of other these whack jobs out there. Uh, one of these uh, Gary something from Area 51. You know, just do your own research, come to your own conclusions and understand we don't know everything. And we're just now getting to a point where we can start to understand smidgens of the unknown. But it shouldn't be written off as fantastical. It should just be another thing that's added to the collective data set so that we can start approaching this in a bit more intelligent of a way. Anyways, my name's Hill Phantom. If you like this, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.